If you'll turn in your Bibles, please, to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> And it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, took them wives of all that they, which they chose. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children unto them, and the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and grieved him to his heart. And man said, I will destroy, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things, the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Now, the significance of this is that in Luke 17, beginning with verse 26, Jesus commented on this. Luke 17, 26. And so it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and drink, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. If it is going to be in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was today, we need to be aware of how it was in Noah's day. Christians are suffering today from a great deal of ignorance. They would much rather hear sweet songs sung, and I like sweet songs, don't you? They would much rather hear ear-tickling sermons than frightening ones. They'd rather hear about love than judgment. But you know, in order to get things in right perspective so we can enjoy the sweet songs and the love of Jesus, we've got to realize that there, we're living in very dangerous days. Amen. Very dangerous days. As it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days when the Son of Man comes. How was it in the days of Noah? I want to point out to you that the fact that the sons of God took the daughters of men and created this monster race is not the cause of the flood, it was the occasion of it. The cause of the flood was the evil, the violence, and the wickedness, and the trigger that pulled the pistol, you might say, and shot the gun of the flood, was when the sons of God took wives of the daughters of men and contrary to God's laws, they created a half-demon and a half-human race. Now every person in the, ra in the human race was corrupted with the exception of eight. When Enoch had a son named Methuselah, Methuselah means at his death comes the calamity. And Methuselah lived way over 900 years, the longest life man that we know anything about. He was a walking signboard. Everybody who knew him as he walked about the earth, every time they spoke his name said, at his death, the calamity, the judgment comes. But people are just like that today. They don't want to hear that. And little by little, the enemy infiltrated the human race, and these sons of God... I'm, I cannot see how they could possibly be human beings. Because ungodly uh, people have married godly ones before, and it never brought about a flood. You'll find references to the <clears throat> uh, 
sons of God. Uh, well, for instance, not all the descendants of Seth were female. Not all the descendants of Cain were male. That's one reason it couldn't have been just a mixture of the human race that caused this. Why were there giants? It says there were giants in the earth. There were giants physically and intellectually. They did some stupendous things. Are you aware that demons are extremely clever and intelligent? Are you aware that some of the leading psychological theories were given to men by demons? That's why they mess people up so. Carl Jung, for example, who was a psychologist or psychiatrist of renown in years gone by and who influenced a great many schools of thought, had a familiar spirit. He even had a name for him and he got a lot of his ideas that he wrote down in books and are, that were taught to people from a familiar spirit. Now can you really believe that a familiar spirit is going to teach things that will help people? You got to be kidding. You don't know much about evil spirits. This intermingling, whatever it was, had to be something far beyond the normal. It was not the intermarriage of godly, un, the sons of God, the godly people, somebody who said, with the evil people. It just won't work that way. That's happened before. It'd be an unequal yoke, but it certainly wouldn't call for the wiping out of the entire human race. And that's what we're talking about here. They were giants in physical stature. They were giants in intellect. It was a supernatural union. It has to be. Let me give you a few scriptures to check later and you can see if this is so. And by the way, you ought to check things out by the scripture. I don't care who you're listening to preach or teach. The word of God is the final supreme court. And while many truths may not be stated word for word in book, chapter, and verse, no truth can violate the principles of Scripture if it's truth. Job 38.7, Job 1.6, uh, and Job 2.1. Let me mention a little trick. When you're writing Bible verses, write the numbers first. It's much easier. Let me give you those again. Job 38, 7, Job 1, 6, and Job 2, 1 speaks about the sons of God and they're definitely angels in view. Another indication is it says there were giants in the earth. And this word giant is Nephilim, which is Hebrew meaning fallen one. By the way, in Matthew 22, 29, and 30, angels are always spoken of as masculine, both Hebrew and Greek. They are not sexless. People have said they're sexless because they don't marry and give in marriage, but that, that's not what the Bible says. In Old and New Testament, the words used for angels are always masculine. By the way, there are no baby angels. Just thought I'd nail that down. Every once in a while, a greeting card, you see one fluttering across. No such thing. Some people have the mistaken notion, you know, they say, well, you know, our baby died, and now it's a little angel. Not so. Now listen, we have a better destiny than angels. Human beings are destined to receive of the grace of God. Angels are the ministering spirits. Amen. They may be great, but I'd rather be one of those who's adopted into the family of God, wouldn't you? Amen. Now, so I, I am, I'm convinced, you may differ with me, and that's your privilege. One thing about here, around here, we differ with one another once in a while. A lot of times Dr. Hager thinks, he know, thinks he's right and I know I am. <laughs> but you know, uh, you may differ with it, but I'm convinced that the sons of God mentioned here, the sons of God who went in and took wives among the children of men were angels. And of course people say, oh, but angels can't marry. 
didn't say that, just said they're not supposed to. Fallen angels have done a lot of things they're not supposed to. And if you don't think that angels get involved in sex, you've got another thing coming. The incubi and the succubi spirits are very deadly spirits, and they're very much involved. All of witchcraft and Satan worship is fueled and revolves around sex. The fallen angels use sex as a tool. I believe that these were Purdue, these angels, I don't know how they did it except by demonic power, they were able to conceive children who were half human and half demon. Now the punishment of them indicates something about that. In the book of Jude it says, these angels who left, not the, who left their first estate, now their first estate was not to marry and give in marriage. They fell from that, and he said, those angels that participated in this are kept in chains, right? And in 2 Peter 2, 4 through 6, it says that their sin was the same as the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was sex. And they're in chains of darkness in Tartarus, a place called in the Greek Tartarus. Your King James says hell. The Greek, the Greek does not say hell. It says Tartarus, a prison house. And by the way, the demons don't like to go there. And you can send them there. It helps sometimes to get them moving in the right direction, which is out. <laughs> what I want you to see is that as it was in the days of Noah, what happened? There were great manifestations of supernatural power which was contrary to the laws of God. And offspring were being produced. You say, what was the purpose of all this? Well, you need to go back to Genesis to find out. In Genesis, God said, the woman will produce a seed, the seed that will bruise your head, Satan. Now, Satan's got some blind spots, but he's pretty smart, too. And he figured it all out that there had to be a stopping of this woman and the seed that she was going to produce in order for him to be safe. Therefore, he moved in and began his campaign. And you can trace it all the way through Genesis, how he tried to subvert and drag away those who were in that promised line. You can see it in Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel. What happened? Well, he got a hold of Cain. That stinking Abel would not pay any attention, young whippersnapper. But he got Cain, and he turned Cain into a murderer. He got Cain away from the way, so he couldn't be the father of the Messiah. And then, because Abel wouldn't do right, then he had Cain murder him. And a murderer certainly was not going to be the one who'd produce the Savior. And just like always, the devil played his ace, and God trumped him with Seth. And the devil said, oops, I didn't expect that. God said, I know, I was holding that in reserve. <laughs> and every time the devil has played and thought he has won, God has moved and overruled him. Every time. It goes all through history. One of the most exciting stories and one of the most exciting studies you can make is to trace how God has overruled the devil every time. Every time the devil thinks he's got everything sewed up, now it's mine, now I've won, then God moves around him. That's one reason that we have such hope that God's going to do it again in our generation. Because the devil's got just about everything sifted down, shook down, and sewed up, and he said, I've got it made. It's just a matter of time until we'll have everything just like I want it. So it's just about time for God to kick her in passing gear and go around him and outmaneuver him again with his people who are listening. 
And there are some people tuned in. I know I run into them across the country. They say the Lord began to speak to me long before I heard of you or deliverance. Then I got your book and everything in it. God said it's true, it's true, it's true. Now you have to be listening to God to believe that because the demons tell everybody that the, that the books are full of lies and I made them up. I should have such an imagination <laughs> as to think up what's in those books. Those books are just workbooks and recount what happened here in the beginning and the growth of a deliverance ministry that has begun to shake the devil's cage and rattle his cage good. You people are evidence of that. You're here. You came to learn. You didn't come here to sing psalms and, and chant pious little mottos. You came to learn how to fight, didn't you? You came determined to be free. You came believing that God had something better than what you've experienced, what you've known to this date. And I'm convinced of that. I don't think we've even begun to plumb the depths of what God wants to do in this generation. But I'm supposed to be scaring you just a minute. There is disaster ahead. There was disaster in Noah's day. And Noah preached. And what a discouraging job he had. Go out and see Noah's folly. A boat as big as a modern aircraft carrier. They said, a boat? What in the world would you do with a boat that size? I don't know. You know these religious fanatics, they're always doing odd, peculiar things. They work on it all the time. He says it's going to rain. Rain? What's that? Well, I don't know. It's some religious something he made up. He says that rain uh, is, is water that's going to come out of the heavens. Out of the heavens? Well, I never heard of anything like that. They say, I know. But you know these religious folks, how they are. Well, he said, well, you know that the water comes up out of the ground and waters everything. I know that. My, my dad told me that. My grandpa told me that. My great-grandpa told me that. You can check as far back as you want to, and nobody can ever remember water coming out of the air. Because you see, there'd never been any rain. Noah was the only idiot that believed it was going to rain. <laughs> he won seven. He had a congregation of seven. The local ministerial association shut him out. <laughs> They said, after all these years you've been preaching, you just have failed. You had not got anybody but your family. You've got a family church. That's not acceptable. You're not reaching the multitudes with the message. But you know something? He may not have reached them, but he condemned and judged every one of them. Did you know that being, the truth being preached in one place, even though a handful do it, judges everybody else that doesn't listen? You just think it doesn't do any good to stand for the right. When you stand for the truth, it judges everybody else that doesn't. And when they stand before God, he'll say, Hey, you know that little stick in the mud church on the corner down there? Oh, but nobody went there but a bunch of rabble rousers, you know. Had that old funny preacher, and they did all kinds of funny things. as odd noises coming out of there at all kinds of hours of the night. They were religious fanatics, you know. They went to church all the time. They had this funny look in their eyes. They got talking about the Lord and it was kind of sickening. They didn't ever want to talk about normal everyday things that everybody's interested in. But you know, Noah kept building that boat. He just kept right up. Building a boat. Building a boat. And one day, when the human race was completely infiltrated with the exception of eight people, guess who they were? They were in Noah's church, the First Baptist Church of the Ark. 
<laughs> you didn't know the name of it? Well, of course. They went into the ark before they went into the water. <laughs> when the human race was completely infiltrated, the devil said, I have won. God will never have his son born of a creature who's half demon and half human. I've stopped him. He'll not be able to produce the Savior. Noah was still nailing on the boat. And about that time, she got finished, and God said, Son, it's time, and here come the most <coughs> unbelievable zoo you ever saw. Here come ducks quacking, chickens chucking, and whatever, whatever they do. <laughs> Horses hooving. Cows, everything started marching in. Well, that created quite a commotion. You know, the neighbors gathered around. What in the world is going on over there now? I don't know. It's the funniest thing. Look at all them, those animals and birds lining up and going in there. What has he done now? Well, look, it looks like the old man and his family are going in. And they went in, and then all of a sudden, God shut the door, bang. <laughs> Neighbors came and said, well, this is new. They're inside that thing. <laughs> they went over there, knock, 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 knock. Hey, Noah, what is it? <laughs> Open the door. I can't, it's sealed. Once you're in the ark, people, if you didn't shut the door, you can't open it. Did you know that? <laughs> you can just put away your little crowbars. They won't work on that thing. They were in the ark. And the thing that destroyed the people around them floated Noah and his little church. There's disaster ahead, people. Did you know... It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Rosemary's baby is no myth. There are babies being conceived by demonic, satanic intervention today. There are women who go through a ceremony which causes them to come out and be pronounced the bride of Satan. Then Satan comes and there is an illicit sexual act and they actually conceive a monstrous creature in their womb. You say, where in the world did you get that? I talked with Bob Larson in Denver, Colorado about four or five years ago. I stopped there in a meeting and had lunch with him, and we were talking, and he asked me, he said, when, what do you know about the bride of Satan? I saw it in your book. Bob does deliverance. He's a good man. Pray for him. He said, I said, well, I don't know much more about it except we ran into that spirit in a woman. He said, well, I was hoping you knew a little more about it. And he proceeded to tell me they were dealing with a woman then and had run across others who had produced a monstrous offspring that had been offered as a satanic sacrifice, a human sacrifice. I'm telling you people, there are weird, frightening things going on today. As it was in the days of Noah, they were doing things contrary to all the laws of God. They were transgressing supernatural laws by the power of Satan. It's being done today. Now, it hasn't become on a wholesale scale, but it's getting there. And you better believe what God is saying in these days. He's calling for a people who will believe him. 
He's going to judge the world. He said, I will destroy the whole world. But you know, there's always his people. There's always his remnant. There is disaster ahead unless the believers seize the authority that is their birthright and begin to move in New Testament power, throwing away their churchanity, their denominational positions, and all those things that God isn't interested in anyway. We've got to get to the place, people, where we're more interested in pleasing God than in doing anything else in our whole lives. Now, that doesn't mean we have to be ugly, hateful, arrogant toward those who do not understand what we're doing. Remember, there are those still caught in the things that once held us. Let's don't turn and become their worst critics and their most deadly enemies because they are still snared for we too, our minds too, were once caught in the bondage that they still are in. It ought to make our hearts go out to them to help them get free because they are bound because there is a need for them to be helped. God give us compassion as we share this desperate message for this dreadful hour. And it is a dreadful hour. People, everything we have ever trusted in or depended on has, is either destroyed or being destroyed. Our Constitution, the law of our land, has been eroded away and ignored and covered up and distorted by many superficial, greedy, and covetous laws which have stripped our country of its wealth and are in the process of bankrupting it and arranging for its complete destruction from the earth. There are wicked men in high places who are directed by supernatural forces that give them supernatural wisdom and uncanny abilities to manipulate in the financial, economic, political spheres. There are people moving for your destruction and mine. There are people determined to stop at nothing until we have a one world government under the Antichrist. They're moving in various areas. They're moving in the educational field. They're moving in the fields of politics. They're moving in the fields of government. They're moving in the fields of human uh, social, uh, sociology. They're moving in the universities, full speed there. They're moving all over the world. And many of them don't even know what they're involved in. They don't really know the monstrous nature of the dreadful thing that they are enmeshed in. There are gigantic power structures, religious and political, economic power structures that are satanically meshed into this. They may seem to be at odds with each other, Actually, they're working for the same thing. And this is the genius of the satanic plot. That while they seem to be working at cross purposes, when it really comes down to it, they get along very nicely. Because they're rooted in the same rotten things. I'm telling you that it's very serious. Very serious very serious. In the second chapter of Revelation, down in verse 18, it tells the story of Jesus exposing problems in a church called Thyatira. He comes to this church with his eyes a flame of fire. 
That means that his eyes are seeing the disaster, the horror that's in, woven into that religious system. He comes with his feet of brass, and brass speaks of judgment. He's coming, exposing, and judging when he comes against this church. This church was characterized by love, by service, by faith, by patience, by works, and the things they were doing in the time he came were greater in quantity than when they started. However, he said he had some things against them in that they allowed a false prophetess named Jezebel to teach and seduce and teach his servants fornication. Fornication is illicit sex. When you move it into the spiritual realm, it means the occult. It means witchcraft. And God calls every contact with the occult spiritual witchcraft and spiritual harlotry. People, we have churches that are teaching yoga, transcendental meditation, who are recommending to their children to play Dungeons and Dragons, which is a witchcraft game, to turn people into witchcraft. We have Christian schools who are giving things to be read, which shouldn't even be read by adults, let alone children. Thyra Tyre was shot through and through with error because this wicked prophetess was allowed to teach and to seduce. And she taught them to commit fornication and to eat food that was offered to idols. Now food that's offered to idols has been dedicated to them. Have any ideas what some of those things might be if you put them over in the spiritual realm? Let your mind float a little bit. It's not hard to see, is it? The church has gotten to the place where she stands for nothing and falls for everything. Most churches think that the epitome of success is to have a great congregation, build a gymnasium, have a bowling alley and a swimming pool. And I never have been able to visualize the Apostle Paul raising money for a swimming pool. <laughs> have nothing against swimming pools. I just think churches have more important things to do than that, don't you? Yeah. As a matter of fact, if they did deliverance, they'd be so unpopular they wouldn't have money to do, build a swimming pool. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if they did deliverance, they wouldn't have any use to do things like that. They'd have too much more interesting, they'd have much more interesting things to do, wouldn't they? I don't want to be critical and all of that, but isn't it time we faced facts? Amen. Just recently, somebody near here had somebody lay down on the platform and demonstrated how we got demons out of people at Hagley's. He said, we lay down, and then he kicked, made like he was kicking him, said, they throw demons out of them like this. He said, that make you mad? No, it made me sad. Because, you know, anybody that lies is in trouble with God. And if you, if you lie publicly, it's even worse. I wonder what he would have done if somebody had stood and said, brother so-and-so, did you see that? Did you see it, or did another tell it thee? Sayest thou this of thyself, or did another tell it thee? Oh, listen. Jesus had the same attacks. Paul had the same attacks. 
And I'm not trying to make us martyrs. What difference does it make what people think? They didn't set the rules up anyway, did they? Well, a lot of times we have people come and say, well, um, you, you're not doing this right. I said, oh, how do you do it? I'm always willing to learn if somebody really knows something. Well, we don't do it, but that's certainly not the way to do it. <laughs> you know something? I like the way we're doing it better than I like the way you're not doing it. <laughs> we're at least doing something. You're doing nothing. And until you have a better way, don't ring my bell. <laughs> because the little we know is helping many hundreds of people. And it's starting many other believers into a ministry. And many have found fulfillment and joy and a real place in working for Jesus because of the little we know. There is a disaster ahead. There's no doubt about it. It's coming. Demons have said, get out of the way. You believe the Bible. You preach about it all the time. Said those things have to come to pass. I said, yes, but not right now. My Bible says he will change times and seasons for his people. Who was it? Joshua got in a fight one day and they didn't have quite enough daylight to finish it. He had a little consultation with God and God stretched the day till his folks could win. Well, I'll tell you, we need some day stretching, don't we? God's folks sure haven't won too much lately. But I believe we're beginning to see it roll. I believe there's coming a time when we're going to have great victories, tremendous overcoming victories. Amen. And Damon told me the other day, he said, you just wait till that workshop. You think you're so smart. Said, we've got things lined up for that workshop. Said, oh, it's going to be a mess. I said, oh, really? Yes. He said, we've got big things planned. I said, that's nice. I said, the bigger things you have planned, the greater will be your defeat. <laughs> and the more God's people will rejoice because you've been turned back. We mustn't believe the lies of Satan. We must believe the truths of God. Too long we've failed to move out on the clear word of God to do what he says. And you know, we all are so lacking in faith that it always surprises us when God does say, do what he said. How many times have you said, Oh, God answered my prayer. <laughs> that means I didn't really think he would, but he did. <laughs> Shame on us. huh? And we're all like that, you know. That reminds me of the first time I ever lengthened a leg. I didn't want to. I'd seen it done, thought it was great. And I planned to take anybody that I ran across over there to this preacher that did it and let them do it. I made one little mistake. I took a bunch of these wild-eyed young people I have around here with me to that meeting. They thought it was great too. They just didn't know what I planned to do. They didn't know I planned to take anybody that needed it over there to the other meeting. So when we got back to our church, at the close of the service, here comes one of these galoots, these big old gluty boys. He said, hey, Brother Worley, she's got a short leg. <laughs> I felt like telling him, shut up. <laughs> All these people gathered around, oh, praise the Lord, Brother Worley's going to lengthen the leg. <laughs> Everybody believed it, but Brother Worley, Brother Worley's wife, and Brother Worley's son. <laughs> we all had serious doubts. We compared notes later. Well, you know, when the devil gets you out on the limb and you hear, you, you hear something going, he, 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 and you look over there and he's saying, he, he, he. <laughs> There's only one of two things. You can either go back toward him or just hang on, say, Lord, I'm out here. If he saws it out, you better get ready to catch me because I'm out here because you told me to get out here. Well, I was out on the limb, and boy, he was a sawing away. And I thought, well, maybe they're mistaken. 
They weren't. They had checked her before they brought her up. But they sat her down, and I was praying, Lord, maybe she won't have a short leg. But, oh, she did. Well, I, I was thinking, now let me see, what did he do? You know, because I hadn't planned to do it. I was just going to, you know, take him over to him. And I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this leg be lengthened. Absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> it wasn't even hot, and I felt sweat on my forehead. <laughs> the devil said, you better quit, preacher, and just say you can't do it. Uh, well, that kind of irritated me. I said, in the name of Jesus, let this leg be lengthened. It didn't do anything. It just sat there and looked at me. And the devil said, why don't you just give up? And I thought, no, I'm too far gone now. I'll just keep on. Another couple of times, and it moved just ever so slightly. And I thought, Whew, oh, boy. And then it came on out. A lot of times, you know, we're like that. We know about the truth. We, we want to do it, but we haven't gotten around to it. And then, we're con then the Lord just keeps, he gets tired of us saying, now one of these days, Lord, I'm going to do this, you know. And, and uh, yes, Lord, I, I went to the workshop, and I think that's great. And I read the books, and if I ever get ready, Lord, if I ever run across a demonized person or something, I, I'll do that. And we keep dodging them, you know, and saying, well, you know, I'll pray about it. Uh, let me go off and fast and pray for a month. And, uh, you know, anything but to confront the thing. And then there comes that dreadful day when God just dumps them right in our lap and we look and there's no place to go and we're hemmed in and we just got to go ahead and do what we know we have to do. And wonder of wonders, it works. Brother Worley doesn't have to be there. Dr. Haggard doesn't have to be there. Nobody has to be there except your confidence in Jesus Christ, and it'll work. Praise the Lord. There's disaster ahead. And the only hope is for God's people to come out of the disaster into the marvelous light of God. That's the only hope. There isn't two of them. There is dreadful disaster ahead. This world conspiracy, and there is one. I don't care who says there isn't. There is. It's documented. It's true. You don't have to live in panic. You don't have to get paranoid. You don't have to build a tree house anywhere. Matter of fact, we're planning to hold our ground. That's what God told us to do, set tight, and that's what we're doing. We don't look like we're planning to fold our tent, do we? We're battening down the hatches for a battle. If that's what the devil wants, we plan to give him a good one. If he beats us, he's going to get a, he's going to know he's tangled with something before he does it. But I'm not so sure he can do it. I believe that God's people, the believers, armed with the authority, the power, of Jesus' mighty name can do things that the world has never thought of before. The prophecy a little while ago said, you'll see things that you've never even imagined. This sounds very similar to other prophecies we have received over the years, that if we would be steadfast and true to the Word of God, that we would see things way beyond anything we had read about or heard about, either in the Bible or in other places. Well, now, I've read about some pretty in interesting things. I've, I've really read about all the great revivals, and I've read about some things I haven't seen happen yet. And I've read about the great moves of God in other places. I'll tell you, there's lots to look forward to. And God said, I'm going to go beyond that. This is going to be the most exciting year. Did you know that the ice is building up at the South Pole. When they explored that thing, was it Admiral Byrd, Admiral Byrd was it, went down there? He put a 70-foot radio antenna up there. There's only five or six foot of that thing sticking out of the ice now. Some people say it's getting, the Earth may be getting so out of balance, it may one day just turn over. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you imagine what a slosh that would make? 
when the poles melt and the temperate zones blast freeze. And then, of course, I mentioned the other night about the Jupiter effect, the planets lining up, pulling on the sun, which has lost, uh, has about lost about 55% of its hydrogen. And when you drop below 50%, you can supernova at any time, which means the star explodes and gets uh, about five to 10 times hotter than usual and then goes out. Did you ever read something sounds like that? A third part of the earth was scorched by the sun. This is going to be an interesting period to live in, isn't it? Aren't you excited? Some of you look more uneasy than excited. <laughs> Well, it's a pretty shaking thing if you haven't thought about it, you know. We're facing the most stupendous things that the world has ever seen in the physical realm, in the political realm, all around. But God is willing to change times and seasons for his people. He hasn't changed. He said, I change not. And I, what I did for Joshua, I would do for you. Demons recently said, you've gained seven years. We're seven years behind in our program now, really. Are you satisfied? I said, not quite. <laughs> People, if we can push them back seven years, how about 50? <laughs> Dr. Haggard wants 70. Praise the Lord for the hope that there is in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord that we don't have to live under the shadow of panic and paranoia. People are always saying, you know, well, I don't like to get around deliverance people. You know, they are so demon-oriented. They're Satan-centered and demon-oriented. And you know, I've looked and looked and looked. I can't, everybody I've run into that's in deliverance is Jesus-centered. And you hear a lot about balance. Oh, we must have a balanced ministry. Well, amen and double amen. Won't it be great when the others get in balance? <laughs> if you went out to your car and it had one-third of every wheel missing, your wheels would be out of balance. There'd be no doubt about it. When a third of the ministry of Jesus is missing from any church or any group of Christians, you're out of balance, people. Don't talk to me about balance when you're so way out of balance yourself. You say, well, why do you people do deliverance all the time? Well, we try not to. <laughs> I mean, every, every once in a while, we almost get through a service without having an uproar. <laughs> now, we had, well, just for example, what was it, last Sunday night? We had a lovely service. We did. We had the Lord's Supper, and it was just so quiet and so beautiful and so lovely until the invitation started. And then it was... Not quiet, but it was still lovely because the enemy was reacting violently to the message of the blood and forgiveness and Jesus coming that came through in the Lord's Supper. So we went into a period of deliverance. And you'll find out too that you have the only washeteria in town. You get all the dirty linen. <laughs> Nobody else wants to do it. They don't want you to do it either, but they sure don't want to do it. I would encourage you, if you want to share the, share the wealth, and there's plenty. Dr. Haggard's always calling me, telling me he's going to send this one, that one, the other up here. I tell him, go ahead and deal, do it, deal with yourself. What do you think we trained you for? <laughs> then he turns around, he, he, gets, uh, he gets these spells of nastiness every once in a while. And he calls me and he says, uh, when I just called to see 
if you might have some people down up there that need help, just send them on down here. We'll help them. <laughs> Praise the Lord for people who are in the battle. Amen? Amen. Some of you are out there, you know, where you're just a lonely little onion in a petunia patch. And you, haven't you noticed how good it feels to be around people who don't think you're nuts? <laughs> you know? And who don't think you're all wop? As a matter of fact, you might have begun to think that you're a little bit backslidden around all this bunch of fanatics that are gathered here. Praise the Lord. That's why we have the workshop. To come together from fellowship for strength, for blessing, and to tell you that though there's a disaster threatening the whole nation, we believe it can be rolled back. We believe, don't you? Praise the Lord. I just believe that God is able, God is willing, don't you? And if we'll begin to move with God, there's no limit to what God can do. There's no limit to what he will do. He said, I will stretch out myself for my people. That's our God talking. When Jehoshaphat got cornered and he was under siege and there was nowhere to go, he called, he proclaimed a fast and said, we got a call on the Lord. Won't that be a great day if we ever see the day when a national leader will call a real fast and ask that all the businesses in the country shut down, that people go to their churches and pray, pray, pray? Wouldn't that be a great day? You think that's impossible? I believe that if God's people would unite together and begin to pray and bombard heaven, if we'll learn how to bind and loose spirits, this is the key to the winning of the battle. Because the demons have repeatedly said, you must stop teaching, binding, and loosing. And that stupid haggard has to quit sending out those prayers across the country. They're doing deadly and dreadful damage to the enemy. Learn how to do it. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. It's not just a bunch of words on paper. It's literal bombarding of heaven. We can move the principalities and powers, thrones and dominions, world rulers, kings, princes. Every angelic rank is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. God has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. We've got to get with this until we believe it till we don't just say it with our mouths anymore, but it literally springs from our innermost being, and it's our whole being. This is why demons hate for believers to get turned on to deliverance, because they learn the demons can be defeated. They learn there's a lot more to be concerned about. Believers who get involved in deliverance learn there's more to life than just getting a house and a car and a lawnmower. Isn't there, if there's no more to life than that, there's not much, is there? If you don't think that the average person is living an empty life, if you ever just take a glance at some of the tri cheap, trite, trashy things that are coming in TV, it is incredible, the utter emptiness of the lives that have no Christ to relate to, no Jesus Christ to revolve around. What an empty life that is. 
But they'll never come where we are, people, until we demonstrate by yielding ourselves to Jesus Christ and becoming his instruments and becoming his living examples on earth. They'll never come and say, what is it that you have? I am so hungry. I am so dry. I'm so empty. Had a call from a deliverance worker in Dallas. And they said, pray. We are working with a woman who is a high priestess in witchcraft. There are many other witches. She desperately wants to be free. We're trying to break the bondage with everything that we know. We're trying to break her bondage. If she gets free, dozens of other witches who are watching her will stream in for deliverance. If she can't get free, they'll say it's no use and abandon the search for freedom for they'll say it doesn't do any good. Pray for those people. What a breakthrough to start delivering the witches, the warlocks, out of the toils of sin. Wouldn't that be great? We've got to learn more about the power that we have. We've got to learn more about what Jesus Christ has told his people. For it's true, people, we have weapons that have never been unleashed yet. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We must learn to unleash those spiritual weapons that the Apostle Paul used to cut a swath across the known world, that the Apostles used to go everywhere, that the disciples went everywhere preaching Jesus, and they went with signs and wonders. And one of the greatest signs that comes is when people are delivered of evil spirits because this will lead to healing. When the evil spirits that are holding the disease in place are vanquished, then Jesus Christ can shine forth. And the miracle of healing can take place. And I believe that if we'll believe God and walk in this way as we ought, we'll see the day when we'll see those people coming out of those wheelchairs. We'll see those twisted and atrophied legs and arms filling out before our very eyes. I want to see that, don't you? Amen. We haven't yet learned. We know what causes a great many things. We have learned what's lying behind it, but we're trying to get the handle on it so that we can get them out every time. Praise the Lord for Jesus. He's still the key. It's being wrapped up in him and learning his word. He has told us constantly, the answers are all in my word. The answers are in my word. The demons have said, if you knew how much power you had, if you had any idea how to use it against us, we would not stand a chance. Isn't that encouraging? <laughs> they can tell the truth, you know. The only reason they said that is because they didn't think we'd find out. But we're learning. They're becoming far more cagey. I have a terrible time now in meetings. They don't want to talk to me. One of them looked at me and said, I'm not telling you nothing, Worley. Said, you'd write it in one of those stupid books. And every demon that's in those books really gets beat up by Satan. <laughs> I said, oh, I probably wouldn't remember it. He said, yes, you would. You'd go right to your room and write it down before you went to sleep tonight. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord for being able to make them uncomfortable. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ, the ever-living Son of God. Thank God for Jesus. Just thank God for Jesus. Would you like to say it with me? Thank God for Jesus. Amen. I believe that he's everything that we need. I take authority over the strong man and every demon present here. The strong man and every person. Oh, you cowards, don't leave yet. I didn't tell you yet. Uh, some of them just can't wait. Uh, 
I take authority over the strong man and every person present. And I put you on notice that we're attacking you from the power of the third heaven. When I call your name or your family name, you must leave the people. They've come here to be free. They love Jesus. They belong to him. Your trespassers, your interlopers, your grounds and your legal holes have been destroyed. And you must leave the people. And when I call your name, come out in Jesus' name. First, the spirits of the occult, the Ouija board, sorcery, witchcraft control. Witchcraft of all kinds, water witching, magic, voodoo, divination, fortune telling, spirits from Gene Dixon, Edgar Casey, Irene Hughes and the Psychics, spirits of automatic writing, handwriting analysis, spirits from tea leaves, coffee grounds, crystal ball, tarot cards, palm reading, astrology, horoscope, signs of the zodiac. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on out of there. Just take three or four slow deep breaths. Breathe them out. Let them go. Come on out of there. Come on, I said, come out in Jesus' name. Come on, all you divination spirits. Come on, fortune teller. Come out of there now. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move, move, move. You're not moving fast enough. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up and come on out. Loose the people and let them go. Come on, hurry up. Hypnosis, ESP, spiritualism, medium, seance, necromancy, levitation. Table tipping, clairvoyance, transcendental meditation, astral projection, ekantar, soul travel, mind control, ESP and PSI. Come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Come out in Jesus' name. Leave. Yes, you have to go. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Hurry. Come out. Hurry. Spirits from Eastern religions, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism, I Ching, Krishna, Zen, Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a hard time, demon? Well, just come on out. <laughs> oh, you have a dirty mouth, don't you? Christian science, Rosicrucians, Theophysy, Unity, Metaphysics, Baha'i, Scientology, Inner Peace Movement, Spiritual Frontiers, Urandia, Moonies, the children of God, the farm, Islam, black Muslims, the way, the walk, and all the cultic groups. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Biorhythm, yoga, karate, and all the martial arts. Taekwondo. Come on. Let's go. Move. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on. Slow deep breaths. Let them go. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come on out. In Jesus' name. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up and move. Come on. Come on. Three nights in Eastern Star. Come out now in Jesus name. Spirits that came from charms, come out in Jesus name. Fetishes, potions, spells, occult games like Dungeons and Dragons, come out. Psychic readings, reincarnation, spirits from pyramid, clairaudience, mental science, false visions, superstitions, amulets, talismans, satanism, karma, hex signs, come on out. Come on, all the occult spirits, let's go out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Come out of there. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Leave the people. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Spirits of laziness, self-deception, impatience, pride. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Leviathan. I break the curse of Leviathan. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Pulled your string, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't please all the people, you know. All right. Leviathan, come on. Leviathan, come out. King over the children of pride. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on, move. Move in Jesus' name. Ugliness, self-hate, irritation, ambition, loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide, death. Loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come on. Loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Move. I said move in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Come out now 
in Jesus' name. Loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come out. Confusion, rejection, depression, misery, torment, doubt, unbelief, greediness, covetousness, spirits of guilt, shame and condemnation. Come out. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. Come out. Come on. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. That's an order. Come out. Move in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Move in Jesus' name. Come out. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Hurry up. Evil heart of unbelief. Come out. Evil heart of unbelief, leave in Jesus' name. Hurry, come out now. All spirits of fear. Fear has torment. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. All the fear spirits, line up. You have to come out now in Jesus' name. Fear. Fear of giving and receiving love freely. Fear of death. Fear of pain. Fear of falling. Fear of darkness. Fear of dogs. Fear of cats. Fear of insects, fear of snakes, fear of earthquakes, fear of storms, fear of crowds, fear of falling. Come out now. Fear of darkness and fear of death. Come out. Fear of death. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Come on. Out in the name of Jesus. Come on. Fear of death. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Leave. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Fear of crowds, fear of water, fear of drowning, fear of close places, fear of the future, nightmares, demons, fear of demons, fear of Satan, fear of the loss of salvation, fear of judgment, fear of purgatory, fear of hell, spirits of wrath, ang anger, temper, contention, and fighting. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on. Wrath, anger, seething anger, rage, vengeance. Spirits of the military, Jim Jones, murder, destruction, vandalism, malice, envy, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, hysteria, fits and convulsions. Come out now in Jesus' name. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on out of there. Child abuse, spirits of child abuse, divorce, separation, spirits of a broken heart, wounded spirit, deep hurt, unforgiveness, revenge, vengeance, Seething anger, rage, schizophrenia and paranoia. Schizophrenia and paranoia. Come on out in Jesus' name. It's time to go. Come on. It's time to come out. Leave. Loose the people and let them go. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of there. Come on out in Jesus' name. Spirits of profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation, spirits of lying, gossip, slander, whining, complaining, self-pity, criticism, mockery, foolishness, ridicule and perversity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation. Come out of that voice box right now. In Jesus' name. Well, if you can't stand it, come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come on out of there. Loose that woman. Let her go. Loose her. Loose her. Go. 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 Get out in Jesus' name. I break every curse of the automatic failure mechanism in working in families. Even back to 10 generations on both sides of family, I break the curse of the automatic failure mechanism. Now the spirits of poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness, and rejection that came in under this curse come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Move. Poverty. Poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness, and rejection that came under the automatic failure mechanism. Come out now in Jesus' name. Move. Come out in the name of Jesus. All spirits of addiction rooted in rejection. We're coming after you. Gluttony, overeating, bulimia, anorexia nuversa, binging, addiction and craving for food and sweets. All right, anorexia, come on. Anorexia nervosa, come out of there. 
Anorexia, come out. Anorexia, come out. Let's go in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Anorexia and bulimia, come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Leave. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Come on out of there. Addiction and craving for and bondage to tobacco of all kinds. Nicotine. Spirits of nicotine and the allergies of nicotine. Come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come out of the lungs, out of the sinuses, out of the breathing passages, out of the bronchial tube. Leave now. Come on. Come on. Addiction and craving for tobacco. Come on out of there, Jesus. Name. Hurry up and leave in Jesus' name. Addiction and craving for alcohol of all kinds. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Who cares to see their bodies not wise? Spirits of wine drinking, mockery, deception and stupidity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out now in Jesus' name. Addiction and craving for it. Bondage to drugs of all kinds. Sorcery, marijuana, LSD, speed. THC, TPC, mescaline, angel dust, cocaine, crack, heroin, valium, amphetamines, diet pills, barbiturates, tranquilizers, phenobarbital. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. I said loose the people and let them go. Spirits of lust, I break the curses of lust from the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. I want all the sex spirits that came in through the eyes, through the ears, through participation, through transfer or inheritance. You come out now. Masturbation, guilt, shame, condemnation, pornography, homosexuality, lesbianism, sex perversion of all kinds, including oral sex, anal sex, bestiality, sadism and masochism, spirits of incest, rape, fornication, adultery, immorality, prostitution, harlotry, occult sex, uncleanness, filth, filthy dreams, filthy conversations, filthy imaginations, sexual flashbacks, sexual fantasies, frigidity, impotence, cruelty, incubi, succubi, lasciviousness, lewdness, nudity, promiscuity, flirting, seduction, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Come out of the sex organs, come out of the lips, the tongue, the taste buds, the throat, and the mind in Jesus' name. Move, breathe them out, people, let them go. Come on out of there. Hurry up, move in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. I break all the curses of deformity, infirmity, and sickness on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Come out of there now. Spirits of sickness and deformity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Sickness and infirmity. Infirmity spirits, come out. Come out of the bowels. Come out of the intestines. Come out of every organ in the body. Sickness and infirmity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move. Come on out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. All spirits of pain, arthritis, swelling, infection, cancer, ulcer, tumor, cysts, and weakness. Come out now. Fatigue unto death. Fatigue unto death. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Ulcer, cancer, tumor, and cysts. Come out. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Lee, come out in Jesus' name. I break the curse of allergies on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. All spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis, and other sinus and respiratory system allergies. Come out now. Hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. Come out now. Sinus, sinuses. Come out of the sinuses. All spirits causing swelling, itching, burning, infection, excess drainage and irritation. Come out of the lungs, out of the bronchial tubes, out of the mouth, and out of the sinuses. All allergies to food and chemical substances. Come out of the bloodstream or whatever part of the body you're hiding in. Come out now. Allergies. Allergies. Come out now in Jesus' name. Allergies. Come out in the name of Jesus. Spirits of Candida. Come out in Jesus' name. Candida. Come out in Jesus' name. 
Spirits of hemorrhoids, muscle spasms, cramps, drowning, asphyxiation, choking, smothering, fainting, swelling, fits, convulsions, and epilepsy. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Spirits of heart failure, heart attack, heart disease, and all the fear of all of these. Come out of the muscles of the heart, out of the bowels of the heart, out of the nerves, out of the blood vessels. Spirits of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, high and low blood pressure, come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Leave. Spirits causing diabetes, gallbladder problems, kidney infection, MS, muscular dystrophy, crippling spirits, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, spirits of psoriasis, eczema, acne, warts, mold, spirit of the bone breaker, the back breaker, traumatic shock and paralysis. They can't, you can't do that because you won't see the windows. Turn the air conditioning on us. We want the air conditioning on Because it's too hot. It goes right out the window. Spirits of cataract, glaucoma, astigmatism, blindness, and all kinds of eye trouble. Come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of deafness, hard of hearing, vertigo, and troubles related to the ears and to hearing. Come out of the people now in Jesus' name. All religious spirits, religious spirits of legalism, externalism, hypocrisy, religious bondage, religious slavery, religious murder, lust and ambition for recognition, lust and ambition for position, lust and ambition for power and control in religious matters. Come out of the people now. Spirits of false love, false gifts, false tongues, false discernment, false word of wisdom, false prophecy, religious dominance. Come out now in Jesus' name. Self-serving spirits, selfishness, greed, no love, religious coldness, no compassion. Spirits of robbery, cheating, pretense, false oaths, blockages, rigid theology, obstructionism, hatred of the truth. Spirits of Nimrod, Semiamorous, and Hemos come out now in Jesus' name. I come against the Babylonian spirits of the Roman Catholic Church. Spirits of idolatry, Catholic baptism, prayer to the saints, dedication to the priesthood, dedication to be a nun. Come out of there now in Jesus' name. Spirits of one true church, one holy priesthood. Spirits from the Mass, from Holy Eucharist, adoration of the host and incense. Come out now in Jesus' name. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. The sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. The joyful mysteries of the rosary. The glorious mysteries of the rosary. Holy Mother Church. Authority of the Pope. Infallibility of the Pope. Fear of the priest. Fear of the nuns. Confessional, holy water, spirits of sacred heart of Jesus, sacred heart of Mary, holy family, spirits from stations of the cross, spirits from the rosary, the crucifix, candle, blessing of the throat, St. Blaise, spirits of fear of hell, fear of purgatory, guilt, condemnation, unworthiness and good works, mind control and holy orders, come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of extreme unction, confirmation, spirits from the sacraments, benediction, human bone relics in the altars, genuflecting, feast days of the saints, votive candles, witchcraft control, forced celibacy, poverty, spirits from religious metals, sacrifice of the mass, angel of good counsel, sign of the cross, spiritual adultery, indulgences, infant of fraud, and religious hatred come out now. The worship and veneration of Mary, Mariolatry, Immaculate Conception of Mary, Sacred Heart of Mary, Mary Queen of Heaven, May Altars in Honor of Mary, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Mercedes, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Snows, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Peace, Mary Star of the Sea, the Blue Army, Spirits of the Blue Army, come out now in Jesus' name. Novenas, scapulars, spiritual blindness, spiritual deafness, 
feast of peace, the feast of life, Lent, destruction of the family priesthood, the passion spirits of agony and ecstasy, ashes on ash Wednesday, St. Teresa, St. the Little Flower, St. Christopher, St. Jude, St. Anthony, St. Catherine, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth, and all the saints. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. You loose them and let them go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose the people and let them go. Now if you need help where you are, we'll get somebody to you to help you.